All right, on this next video, we are going to continue working through the GLMM code and looking at the salamander example. In the last video, we saw the coefficients um, output for the fixed effects. Now we can look at a little bit lower down in the summary, we have the variance components output. Um, so we had two variance components, remember a female variance and then a male variance. So we can see here that our female variance is about 1.36 and the male variance is about 1.223. So we definitely see some variability um, from female salamander to female salamander and from male salamander to male salamander because we can look across here to our p-values and see that these variances are um, statistically significantly different from zero. Okay, next up let's talk about variability a little bit. So you already know about standard error. And um, if you remember, like in the context of a linear model, a standard error just measures the variability um, from like data set to data set. So say you go out and sample 100 people and do some analysis, and then your friend goes out and samples um, 100 people independently of you and does their um, identical analysis. And the only difference between yours, your analysis and your friend's analysis is that you have different data. Then um, the results, will be a little bit different, of course, um, and we would measure that variability from data set to data set as the standard error. So we have a similar thing in the world of Monte Carlo, and it's called Monte Carlo standard error. So if we run this Monte Carlo scheme once and then run it again with different random numbers, we should get results that are a little bit different and that's called Monte Carlo standard error, that variability from run to run due to different um, random numbers in our Monte Carlo scheme. So it's a good idea to make sure that we look at our Monte Carlo standard error to make sure that it's small enough, because if you have a pretty big Monte Carlo standard error, that means that you should run your Monte Carlo scheme longer in order to have more trustworthy results. So let's check out our Monte Carlo standard error in the case of this salamander model. Our Monte Carlo standard errors are 0 0.17, 0 0.03, or rather 0 0.017, 0 0.03, 0 0.044, 0 0.024, 0 0.09, 0 0.055. And those numbers in isolation don't really mean a ton. So what we want to do is compare our Monte Carlo standard error against um, our standard error, or maybe just against the coefficients um, estimates themselves to see whether this is small enough. So let's just choose one of these, like this 0.017, and um, compare it against the standard error. So let's compare 0.017 against this number here. And it looks like our Monte Carlo standard error is a good deal smaller than our standard error. So I would say like, we're good to go. And we could continue um, to compare the other ones as well. 0.03 is a good deal smaller than 0.366 and so on. Um, and I didn't have enough room on the slide to get to the variance components, but it would be a good idea to compare those as well. Okay, so something good to know is if your Monte Carlo standard error is too big, you should run your Monte Carlo scheme for a larger Monte Carlo sample size. If your standard error is too, la too large, um, running your Monte Carlo scheme longer won't help anything because what you really need is more actual data, you would need to go out and sample more salamanders. Okay, so a natural question is, how do the results of GLMM compare against the results of other methods such as Monte Carlo EM or um, LME4, which uses penalized quasi-likelihood? So uh, what I've done here is just organized all the estimates into a table. Here we have, our four fixed effects, and then our two variance components. And what we can see as we go down the line here, the estimates pretty match up, pretty much match up. Here, also matching up. Matching up pretty well, matching up pretty well. So whether you use um, any of these three, it looks like the results are matching up pretty well. Uh, the only real difference is when you get to the variance components. So one thing about Monte Carlo EM is that it finds the Monte Carlo maximum likelihood estimators. 
It doesn't do other things like estimate variance or enable walled tests or likelihood ratio tests. It just finds the um, optimizer, the Monte Carlo maximum likelihood estimator. So this will definitely find us the MCMLEs. So these are the true uh, MCMLEs. So since these are all matching up these first two rows, that's a really good thing because it means that GLMM is finding the true uh, Monte Carlo maximum likelihood estimates. When we look down to these last two rows, um, we see that the variance component is about 1.4 for females and about 1.25 for males, um, according to MCEM. And then when we use penalized quasi-likelihood with the R package LME4, we get variance components that are a bit smaller, 1.2-ish and 1.0-ish. Um, and this is a trend. Um, the variance components produced by penalized quasi-likelihood, such as in LME4, tend to be um, underestimating the true maximum likelihood estimates. All right, some other things that we could do, we could talk about comparing uh, GLMM against the R package LME4. So definitely LME4 is much faster, and that's because its methodology is penalized quasi-likelihood rather than any kind of Monte Carlo scheme. Um, LME4 also, if we're using like a very simple model, such as like one random effect per observation, then LME4 performs maximum likelihood for those simple models. So if it's a simple model, like one, uh, one random effect per observation, then LME4 will do maximum likelihood. Otherwise, it's going to do penalized quasi-likelihood. Um, so a thing about penalized quasi-likelihood is it um, starts off with like a Laplace transformation and then does a whole bunch of additional um, approximations to simplify down that likelihood to a so-called penalized quasi-likelihood. And the thing about it is that uh, you can't know like how close the penalized quasi-likelihood is to the likelihood itself. And this differs from Monte Carlo likelihood approximation because if you want, you can just run your Monte Carlo likelihood approximation um, for a larger Monte Carlo sample size, and then your Monte Carlo likelihood approximation will converge to your likelihood. So um, GLMM has this advantage. If you have the time on your hands, then you can run your model longer and get a better and better approximation. And you're not able to do that with penalized quasi-likelihood. Um, some nice things, since your MCLA converges to the likelihood, that means that all of your inference is also going to converge. So any likelihood-based inference you do on the Monte Carlo likelihood approximation, you can rest assured that that would converge to the true inference with a, um, based just on your likelihood um, if you uh, ran this for longer, for a longer, larger Monte Carlo sample size. So your inference converges as your Monte Carlo sample size increases. Um, we know that the variance components for LME4 tend to be um, underestimated, and it's impossible to know how closely LME4's um, PQL matches the likelihood. Um, and for now, since the GLMM computations are pretty computationally expensive, uh, the random effect structure is just limited to independent normals. They don't have to be identically distributed, but they do have to be independent. Um, additional things you can do with GLIM, GLMM, um, you can get the variance covariance matrix. So that's really useful if you want to do walled tests or create confidence intervals or calculate standard errors. And you can use the confint function to get confidence intervals. Um, and then more recently, like in the last year or year and a half or so, we've incorporated parallel computing. So if you have access to multiple cores, I highly recommend that you utilize those and just pass a cluster into the R function, GLMM. Um, and if you want to weight some observations more highly than other observations, then you can do a weighted likelihood. So you can weight those observations. All right, good luck to you, take care.